Hi, geography students. Welcome to another webinar. We're so excited to have with us David Fusey. David, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. So David, tell us a little bit about yourself as a geography student. Yeah, um, so my name is David Busaith, like Lindsay said. Uh, I'm from Salt Lake City. I am studying, obviously, geography. I'm in the geospatial science and technology emphasis. And so I am currently uh, a senior in my last semester, and um, I TA for a couple of geography classes. And yeah, I'm going to be heading up to Boise to work for a company called Resource Data in April here after I graduate. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, I think the reason why I asked David to be with us today is because when I first met him, he wasn't sure what he wanted to do or even if he was in the right major. And so David, I was hoping maybe you could talk a little bit about your journey mm -hmm. as a student and kind of the decisions that you needed to make along the way to make sure that geography is where you wanted to be. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So my first exposure to uh, geography at BYU was in my freshman year, which was actually way back in 2015. And for part of my um, global and cultural awareness uh, GE credit, I took Geography 120 with Dr. Plu. And I didn't know much about geography as a discipline at the time. Um, but I took that 120 class and I just loved it. I thought it was super fun. And, um, you know, Dr. Plu being the cartography professor, he uh, sort of awoke a latent love for math, a mechanical engineering major. Um, fast forward a little bit, I took physics and chem, uh, not chemistry, physics, and calculus, and decided I didn't want to do that anymore. And um, I decided I would take uh, a couple more geography classes just to kind of see what was going on. Um, and so I ended up taking Geography 101. I love that too. So I thought, maybe this is, maybe this is where I need to be. Um, Post-freshman year, I spent some time away from school. Um, for some health related reasons and um, trying to get ready to go on a mission. Um, so I ended up serving that mission in 2017 to 2019. And I came back to BYU in the fall of 2019. And by that point, I had been away from school for almost three years. And I didn't know if I wanted to, ge to do geography anymore. I was like, I don't know if I can, you know, really do anything with this in the long term because I was sort of I was trying to find a balance of you know something I enjoyed but something that I felt like I would also be able to make good money doing um, and up to that point I, I didn't really know what the opportunities were like in geography um, but I decided to take another geography class that first semester back um, to see if it was what I wanted to keep doing and I ended up taking landscapes of disaster with Dr. Becker which was fantastic. I loved that class and it kind of pulled me back into the major. And so I ended up, um, bef before I had left on my mission, I had switched into geography as my major just because I knew I didn't want to do engineering anymore, but I didn't know, you know, if geography was what, what I was going to stay with, but I ended up sticking with it. And um, yeah, the last couple of years, I mean, I guess, yeah, two years. I can't even remember anymore because of COVID and all that, but it, they've been super great. And I've loved basically all of my classes. Some of them were harder than others, but they always felt rewarding. Um, and I've learned a lot more about, you know, this type of opportunities that are available for someone with a geography degree. Um, and I think one of the great things about the, the geography major at BYU is the fact that we have all the different emphases. So, um, you know, between certain emphases, there's a lot of overlap, but you can get specialized enough to where it can be different and interesting if it's something that you want a change from. Um, but I can still apply these skills to, you know, basically anything that falls under the envelope of these different emphases. And so I, I, I feel like it's opened up a lot of opportunities for me, um, as well as some of my other 
you know, academically related things that I've done. So, yeah, um, I don't know, that's pretty much all I have to say. I mean, do you, do you have any questions? or? I do. <laughs> I have some follow-up questions, actually. So I was curious, it, it sounds to me like, aside from the fact that you were being drawn to the coursework, how did you make sense of the skills that you were learning in the classes as it related to post-graduation opportunities? Did you, what were some other things that maybe you did to kind of understand what you were getting? Because sometimes it, it's ambiguous, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's like, what am I really learning? Unless it's a cartography class, yep. you know, what am I really learning from understanding these different cultures, these different regions, these different aspects of geography? Can you help me kind of make sense of that? Yeah, absolutely. So, I think the biggest thing for me was, um, I mean, I guess as far as the, the coursework itself is concerned, um, it was. Oh, wait, we're on a lag. Just a second. Hold what you're saying. Just a, just a second. I, I did it kind of weird. Okay, we're going to need to start over on that one because our internet cut out. So I'll piece it together when okay. I do an edit. But let's start okay. over again. Okay. Sorry. So um, I think what I what I learned about, you know, as far as the coursework itself is concerned and how that became applicable was I, I was taking some mid-level geography classes at the same time as some of the intro ones. And it became apparent that like, you know, a lot of the, the topics that we covered in the intro classes and just the ideas and the, you know, the sort of just the way to, you know, think geographically or think spatially, right? That becomes really useful when you're doing the more applied um, like skill set type things. Because um, obviously as a, a geospatial science and tech major, my main thing is GIS. And so um what made me stick with that was was you know looking at the types of jobs and the type of applications that GIS has in you know the professional world and seeing you know it's growing and there's tons of people who are using it for all kinds of applications and so if I can learn how to use it then you know I can eventually learn how to apply it to any sort of, you know, niche or application for any other company. So it's kind of like, it's almost the same thing as, you know, what the, the principles I learned in my intro classes became applicable to when I was trying to actually, you know, create my own maps and things like that. The, the you know, the basics of GIS of, you know, just like, what is, you know, vector overlay, like knowing all of that really well will allow me to you know, in my career, say, okay, this is what I know GIS can do, and this is how I can apply it to this problem or to your, you know, your company model. Like, I can help you, uh, you know, gain useful information from it. So, um, along with that, um, I, I ended up attending s several of the networking events that the, that I guess you guys in the advisement center help with that and with the department and just talking with people who are GIS professionals or geospatial intelligence professionals or whatever um, made it really apparent that, you know, there are ways to use this and they're in demand as well. So that was what really, uh, those were the two main things that stuck out to me is just, you know, understanding how learning the basics applies to being able to do advanced things, um, you know, on a deeper level, obviously intuitively that makes sense, but like really, you know, experiencing it and then, um, you know, speaking with people who, who do do this for a living uh, made it, uh, you know, apparent that I could also do it for a living, so. Yeah. Thank you so much. I kind of want to talk a little bit about that networking too. Tell me about the process that you needed to go through to secure other experiential learning, and maybe even this job that we're so excited that you have after you graduate. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I guess I kind of left that out um, that I have done. Um, I'm currently doing a couple of different internships that are 
uh, geography related. Um, and as far as the networking goes for those, uh, one of them is with Dr. Plew uh, on his Think Spatial crew. Um, so any of you who are GST majors, if he talks about Think Spatial, like having openings, talk to him about it. Because I learned, I have learned so much doing Think Spatial, just about how to use GIS and how to just top to bottom from collecting data all the way to making maps that look good. I have done all of it and I've learned, you know, I learned a lot in the classes I took, but I've learned even more by, you know, practicing. And, um, and it was uh, that experience along with experience I've gotten as an intern at American Fork um, in their public works department that I believe are what secured my job, um, this position that I've been offered up in Boise with resource data because um, I ended up applying for the American Fork position just because, um, you know, I, I, I knew that having previous work experience would, you know, look really good on a resume, obviously, but it would also help me learn a lot of things and I would be able to talk about those things when I interviewed with somebody. So instead of having, you know, no idea what, you know, the GIS workload looks like, I could say, yeah, this is what I've done you know, to solve this problem or do, you know, this task. Um, and so it, it was, uh, I think that those experiences are really what um, secured the position for me as well as, um, you know, being involved in my coursework in my higher level classes, uh, like with advanced GIS and uh, cartographic design. Um, I was actually, I put a couple projects from those classes on my resume um, and I was actually in the interview process asked a lot of direct questions about those projects. And so um, it all just stemmed from, you know, one, taking an active interest in what I was doing um, and then really trying to understand it and then leverage that understanding into, you know, hey, I know what I'm doing. Um, I actually had a great opportunity when uh, last semester when I was taking advanced GIS, we did a, we were trying to automate moving CAD data into a GIS. I won't go into any more detail than that, but I was, the Utah Valley GIS Association had their fourth quarter meeting here at BYU with Dr. Plew, and I had the opportunity to get up and, you know, describe our whole project. And it was just, you know, seizing little opportunities like that, you know, when Dr. Plew was like, hey, I need help. Hey, Dr. Plew, I'll help you. Hey, we need somebody to do this presentation. I'll do the presentation. It's just putting yourself out there, um, engaging with the coursework and engaging with your professors. Those were the biggest things that led to me having these opportunities that, um, you know, gave me a lot of experience and then made me look really good on a resume so that I could be offered this position. So. Oh, I love that. And I like how it's, it's piecemeal, right? Mm -hmm. It's not something that would have happened had it not been for these other experiences that kind of built, you know, it's that principle that we learn all the time, line upon line. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the, the cool thing, um, and something that I feel like, not that we're lacking in geography, but like, I feel like we tend to be a little more introverted, at least in the classes I've been in. And, um, you know, but really like participating in class and, you know, interacting with my professors, you know, I've had, I, I'm not trying to, you know, be braggadocious or anything. I don't mean it this way at all, but <laughs> because I was interacting and, you know, trying to answer questions and, and showing that I was engaging, um, I've had multiple professors ask me to be, you know, a TA for them, which even that looks, you know, is, is experience. So, um, I think it just starts with showing that you want to be there, that you are trying to learn, and, and then um, just giving, you know, giving your all in that regard, you'll get noticed, you know, first by the professors, but then next by who knows, you know, you could end up in front of all the Utah Valley GIS people and be, you know, and someone might say, hey, I want to talk to you, or you could go talk to them. Like, it's just, you know, you got to take advantage of whatever opportunities are presented and not, you know, sit back on your heels. Because I think my first couple of years, I felt like I was like, man, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot. But then when I started looking and asking, 
that's when opportunities came flooding in. Mm -hmm. So I like that. And I think it's hard. You're right to be proactive when maybe your nature isn't. And so one of the things I talk to students about is start where you are. If your if your interaction is with one or two people, that's fine. It doesn't need to be you going into a big room full of all these people and introducing yourself to 10 people. That's not how this works. It's, it's very individualized. Um, but I like this idea of it does build on one another. So if you can expand your network, it will be one at a time. It doesn't need to be several at a time. Although sometimes that works for other people like me yeah. who are super extroverted, where you walk into a room and you want to know every single person. And so I think knowing that it's an individualized experience and knowing that there is somebody on the other side of the veil pulling for you and walking with you in that is, is always something to remember too. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, on the introverted side, like I'm not, I'm not a super outgoing person but I just know that like you know when I started listening to people and then you know taking an interest in the things that they did um that was the easiest way to talk to them was to say hey tell me about this project you're doing because that sounds really cool and then I don't have to do that much talking and they and they feel good because they're talking about what they enjoy and we make and you make a connection so I I you know baby steps I guess is the yeah way to do it. I like that advice Speaking of which, what, what suggestions do you have for students who aren't sure about what geography can do for them? It's a great question, honestly, because I was in that position for a long time. I was thinking, you know, is there really, you know, something for me? Because um, one of the big reasons that I, uh, you know, fell in love with geography in the first place is that I wanted to find a balance between like a human science and like social science and like physical science um because you know I liked things like geology and stuff like that but I didn't want to do all the chemistry and all of those things and like psychology is cool but you know I didn't really want to go into it I didn't want to you know do graduate school um and so I found this nice balance with geography so I think for one if that's sort of your concern you can do both in geography um but beyond that, um, obviously networking helps. That was a big thing for me was just, you know, interacting with alumni and people who, you know, do geography for a living. Um, but even, um, you know, one of the one of the main things I did was I jumped on uh, the American Association of Geographers website, the AAG, and they keep a list of, um, like jobs that people with geography degrees can get, you know, that, that get hired for quite often. Um, and I was just blown away by the sheer like volume of things you can do. Cause um, I know one of the things you and I talked about early on when I started coming to see you was that a lot of people, you know, don't even work in the field that their degree was specifically for. So um, it's really, you know, it's, I don't know. It's even if you get a geography degree, you don't have to end up doing geography forever. Like you can do a, a, all kinds of different things. Like one of one of the options I was thinking about was being an air traffic controller because that was on the AAG website. So um, as far as advice goes, um, you just got to start looking yourself because um, as much as it would be awesome if someone would, nobody's just going to sit down and tell you everything. Um, and that's how it's going to be, you know, for our whole lives. So, and I, that was a lesson I had to learn the hard way, which is why I'm bringing it up like this. Um, so, I mean, just taking the time to, to research, um, keeping an open mind and, you know, not, not, I guess not pigeonholing yourself, not thinking, Oh, if I get, an intelligence degree, I'm going to go work for the CIA. Like that's not necessarily true. Um, and it doesn't have to be. So just, yeah, just start looking, start asking, um, you know, the quicker you can start building a network, the better. And, you know, even if the people you network with 
aren't going to, you know, if they're not specifically in a field you want to get into, they could probably direct you places because they know more people than you do. So that that's my advice, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I like all of it. I, I like specifically that you said don't pigeonhole yourself because I think that there are so, because there are so many opportunities, it's kind of a, dis, it, you do yourself a disservice by saying it's only going to look this way for me, mm -hmm. you know? So I really like that advice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to post this video and students look for more information, start talking to your professors and start networking. Do it. <laughs>